Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're all doing great. Welcome to an episode of the React Intermediate series. So in this video right here, um, I'm gonna be continuing development on our React app. And uh, if you don't know uh, what our React app is, it's a invoicing CRM application. And basically right now it just doesn't even boot um, because I cloned it down and all the dependencies are out of date. And as you know, things are with Node and the whole environment, uh, it broke, it didn't work. Uh, the Rails app part, the API part actually worked, uh, but you know the React part and the JavaScript part all broke. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade the entire stack. I'm going to upgrade everything into the latest versions. Um, you know the latest versions of React, the latest versions of Webpack. So in this you know episode right here, we're going to be focusing on Webpack four. Uh, all the configurations are going to change, um, and basically once we're done with that, then we'll move on to you know continuing the development of the actual application. This is going to be a free episode, so if you found this on YouTube, um, hey, uh, welcome. And uh, you know, if you like what we're doing, uh, check out our website. Become a member for nine dollars a month. Uh, we have a really uh, cool uh, content on our site regarding React, Rails, Elixir, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. So check that out uh, on our site. Uh, so without any further ado, let's go ahead and proceed. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to modify our um, this file over here, the package.json, this is where, you know, it all happens. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, reference you guys, first of all, to github.com slash fronto.js template. So this is a great starting point. Uh, if you are just starting out with uh, React, you can clone this and then it'll give you kind of like everything production ready, um, you know, ready to go to build an app with. And, you know, we kind of like reference off of this, you know, this is kind of like our starter pack, you know, to remove all the boilerplate and whatever. Um, and this one has a pretty good starting point in terms of configurations for Babel and all that stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy a lot of this stuff. So I'm gonna copy this Babel core. I'm gonna put everything in the dev dependencies. So just basically follow along with what we have here and modify. So I'm gonna copy everything with the Babel prefix. Copy that. And then I'm gonna head over into here in the dev dependencies. Um, so Webpack is also going to be Webpack 4. So we can reference um, all that later. So for now, I'm going to move, put all Babel stuff in here and then I'm going to remove the Babel um, stuff from up here. So, and then uh, the only Babel thing that's going to be in the dependencies is going to be the Babel runtime. So I'm going to copy that, um, put that in the runtime, put, put that in the dependencies like that and that should be pretty much it. So auto prefixer, Babel loader, um, all this Babel plugin stuff that you see are now going to be put inside of the dev dependencies. Uh, and this is, you know, how it should be because it is a development dependency. Uh, class names, animate, CSS, all can be in dependencies. Clean Webpack plugin can be down here. So I'm going to put all that down here. Um, and uh, CSS loader, so extract uh, text Webpack plugin is now not relevant anymore in uh, Webpack 4. So we're gonna remove that, I'm gonna replace it with something else. All right, so I'm gonna do that, CSS loader. And uh, I'm gonna remove extract, uh, you know, extract text webpack plugin. I'm gonna put file loader in the dev, dev as well. Frontal localize, frontal connect, all can be in here. Glob, again, can be in the, so lodash, uh, glob and all can be down here. And uh, yeah, MobX, MobX React, Node SAS can all be in the, Node SAS can actually, along with post CSS loader, can be in here. Yep, that should be fine. Um, React DOM, pure CSS, they all look good. Uh, router 5, SAS loader, these all can be inside of the dev dependencies as well. So I'm just going to put them in there like that. And then now we're going to put, uh, what else are we going to put? We're going to put the resolve URL loader. All right, so that's pretty good. Uh, at this point, we're, we're doing pretty well. Uh, so, you know, uh, everything is kind of like in the right place now. Uh, we've got the dependencies in here. Uh, as well. So what I need to do now is I need to upgrade Webpack to version 4. So I'm going to do just that. So Webpack is going to be uh, 4.28.1, I believe. And Webpack Dev Server is going to be um, 3.1.14. 
yeah. Uh, so I think that will pretty much clean up our dependencies. Uh, we, the only thing that's missing here is the mini CSS uh, extract plugin. So I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to copy the mini CSS extract plugin like that. All right, so now uh, I can go ahead and uh, close my applications or do yarn run, uh, in yarn install. So this is going to pretty much upgrade my entire dependencies and all that and everything should be okay. Uh, the other thing I'm probably going to need to do is upgrade the configuration files. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. So what I'm going to do is in here, I'm going to go into the template and I'm going to go into the config and in development, I'm going to click on raw and I'm going to copy everything in here. So this is again on GitHub, you can go ahead and copy this uh, off of GitHub. So it is already available. So I'm going to go into development, I'm going to paste everything in here. Uh, and then I'm going to go back and then I'm going to look at the production config as well. Uh, and then basically again, click raw uh, and then click copy. And I'm going to go into production. Uh, so, you know, th these configurations, a few things have to change. It's just the way that the, you know, the mini extract plugin has to be configured and a few little thing that has to be changed in terms of the, um, you know, the, the, the little nuances of, uh, you know, like for example, adding a mode and all that stuff. Uh, so after this, you know, you can go ahead and do a diff and see what's changed. Uh, you guys should be able to do that right now. So by now, uh, so I'm going to change this to a V1 and then localhost 3000 as well. So it actually references our server. Uh, the API server for the proxy. So, you know, this is just what I copied from here. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, entry, I guess everything stayed the same. Yeah, looks pretty good. Source, directory, main, and base. And let's look at the output over here. So, yeah, I, I believe the output does change. Um, it does change. So, I'm going to copy the output as well. So, I'm going to copy that. And then um, I'm going to paste, paste that in there. Whoops. So paste that in there like that. So the chunk hash becomes hash basically. Um, and yeah, so this will work just fine. Uh, and then basically, I think that's it. Uh, let me just be sure. Um, I think we do need to change the way that the routes work, I believe. Um, no, actually what we have to do now is we need to upgrade uh, MobX. Um, but not to worry, uh, this episode is just going to be about um, Webpack. So I've already upgraded Webpack. Um, so, you know, what, what I can do as well is, is Babel Loader can now, you know, not use the beta version. We can actually use the production version. Um, and HTML Webpack plugin can also be upgraded, I believe. Uh, so let's go ahead and make sure that all those dependencies are correct. I'm going to go into package. Um, so what was it? Babel loader. So let's see Babel loader in here is 8.0.4. So I'm going to copy that and go into my package.json, package.json. And then I'm going to paste the version of Babel loader into here. So HTML webpack plugin, it's 3.2.0 now. So I guess I can up upgrade that as well. Just like that, and low dash, 0.11.4 is already fine. That looks good. So, uh, you know, with that warning, that pretty much uh, corrects everything. Um, so, uh, we're also going to upgrade Fronto Connect. So we are using Fronto Connect, and then that means we have to upgrade MobX as well. Um, so, I'm going to upgrade MobX next. Um, but in, in this episode, let's just uh, leave this here for now. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to yarn install to make sure everything is working fine. Uh, and then I'm going to run the dev, uh, you know, to show you that everything does work when we run the dev server. So yarn run dev. Um, and then basically, whoops. Oh, I, I see. We need to install Webpack CLI into here as well. Um, so I, I guess I forgot to do that. Yeah, so Webpack CLI. So I'm going to copy that and uh, go ahead and paste that right in there. Uh, and then I guess that should be okay now. Uh, yarn install. And then we're going to run uh, yarn run dev again. All right. So that looks like it started up. Everything looking good. Okay. So we have a few issues here. 
with the Babel config. Okay, so, okay, let's take care of that as well. So I'm gonna go over into the template over here and uh, basically our Babel config has now changed. So if you go to Babel RC, I'm gonna go to raw, I'm gonna copy that and head back over into here um, and then just paste everything and that will pretty much work uh, out of the box. So I'm gonna close that, yarn run dev again. So let's see, this should build successfully and bam, there we go. Look at that with chunking and everything working out of the box. Um, so yeah, uh, that's it for the upgrade uh, to Webpack 4. Uh, you can reference our template. We're gonna have the link in the description section below. Check that out. Uh, also become a member on our site to get access to more awesome content. And with that, I'm gonna wrap up this episode. I'll see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.